And now we'll hear from Teresa and Colleen and Blaze Martin. If my dad were a speaker today, he would want to remind us that tomorrow's Memorial Day. I, I think probably the most important holiday to him. Um, my dad was a Marine. He decided to become a priest um, and left the Marines to join the seminary. Shortly thereafter, the Korean War started and all, all but one of the people that were in his platoon died there. And um, so war has been something he's tried to prevent and dreamed of ending uh, his entire, well, almost his entire life. Um, and I also want to say just on a personal note, he's the best dad in the world. <laughs> And I miss him. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I, I just, this is the first time I'm getting a look at the crowd. This is unbelievable. Thank you so much. I'm just so grateful. Amazing. I am, I'm just so grateful for all of you being here. And, uh, you know, we must have gotten, I've gotten probably thousands, it seems like thousands of messages since Blaze died. And even before that, when he was still in the hospital and we were struggling for that six months to bring him home for palliative care and so on, that he was so aware of how much our community, I, I love to call it our OOA family, but it's, it's beyond that as well. But our peace community, you cannot imagine. Uh, we, we would never have gotten through this six months with all that Blaze had to go through if it hadn't been for the community of friends that we have. And I'm looking around and seeing you, so many of you tonight. And so many people you know, have just asked me, well, how, how, how was it with Blaze? He, he, he carried the burden of the world on his shoulders at all times. He really, every time we heard another s shooting in Yemen or whatever, it would, it would really, it was, it was every time it was as if it was one of his own children, of one of his own beloved. And yet he had that sorrow and that sadness and that, caring for so many people, but as was mentioned so many times today, his joyfulness, he still, he lived everything that he believed. Everything you saw about Blaze, there were no surprises. He believed so deeply that we are one people, that we have all been created by one people, and that we, we are brothers and sisters. We are one big family. And so when one of us is hurt, we're all hurting and we all have to do that. He carried that all the time. And uh, as we would watch the news together, I know you got an exhibit of how he would stick his tongue out at Robert, at uh, what was it, Reagan or whoever. But, and sometimes I used to have to say, Blaze, would you wait? I, I, I know what you think about it, but can I hear the speaker finish also, please? <laughs> because he would be so caught up in what was going on. But. I know you know that he was one of the kindest persons that I have ever met. And my dear Irish father, for who both of my parents were born in Ireland, and uh, I grew up in an Irish ghetto. We were all Irish immigrants in my, where I grew up. The, the Italians were in that neighborhood, and the Irish were here, and the French were there, but we were all immigrants. And uh, my father always said, well, stick with your own. If you came from Ireland, you're supposed to stick with your own, none of these other people. And so by the time that, uh, and, but he was afraid that the Italians uh, used m more bad language than the Irish did. 
So he said, especially stay away from the Italians because they have no morals. <laughs> so, so what a surprise it was when I left the convent in 1967, left from Chile, and uh, came back home to tell my father and my parents that well, I had already told them I was leaving the convent and going to come back home. And uh, it was very hard for my, I was the eighth child of our family. So um, it was hard. And my father was trying to deal with his own religion, which meant that by all means, Blaze and I would go to hell for all eternity. And that was something we truly, I believed it until I was 32 years old, and which is why I stayed for 12 years in the convent, because I didn't want to go to hell for all eternity. <laughs> and uh, then when I came back to the States and met Blaze, well, Blaze was thrown out of Guatemala in December of 67 because of his work there. But when my father finally, uh, I got home and after some time, after being out and getting acclimated to the new world, um, I went home for one visit and um, my nieces were, were all there and they were intrigued because they had only known me. I was in the convent all the while they were growing up, so they had only known me in a habit with the veil and all this uh, rosary beads and everything around me. And they said, Aunt Teresa, are you dating anyone now? <laughs> and uh, my father was listening over in the corner there trying not to show his interest. And uh, I said, yeah, I am. And, and they said, oh, really? What's his name? And I said, uh, Blaise Bonpain. And my father came over. He said, what was that name? <laughs> Blaise Bonpain. And he said, oh, well, what nationality is that? And I said, well, he was, he's Italian, Dad. Oh, glory be to God, Italian. <laughs> oh, he blessed himself immediately. And then a few minutes later, he said, uh, and I was 32 when I left the convent, and I was now 34, I guess, a little bit later. And um, so he said, well, what's he been doing with his life? <laughs> oh, and my father was holier than the Pope. He got up, he went to mass every single morning of his life, took me to devotions all the time. And so he really believed whatever the church said, that was what was the real thing. So, um, so I, I, my heart was breaking because I knew that my father would think that I'm going to hell for all eternity. And that was not a light thing. So I was trying to soften it. And I said, well, uh, he was in the seminary, Dad, and thinking I could get away with it. And he said, well, he wasn't ordained a priest, was he? Yes, Dad. Oh, glory be to God. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. And he literally walked out, and this was the typical way that the Colleen family solved problems. He went out and took a three-hour walk, came back, and he said, well, you know, Teresa, after this, um, my parents were from Ireland, I mentioned. They didn't have a lot of, of education and uh, sixth grades in Ireland. And so he hadn't really read up on everything in the world, but he said, Teresa, ever since this ecumenical, ec economical council, the church has changed quite a bit, and you know, they're letting the Italians work in the fire department in Troy now, too. <laughs> and uh, Blaze's father was a superior court judge, and my father was a welder in the Ford Motor Company, but he still knew who was up on top here in the, this Irish-Italian thing. At any rate, I just want to share with you the joyfulness of being married to Blaise Bonpain for the 50 years in January that we would have been married. And um, it was, I feel like I have left, lived 10 lives in many ways, and I have in many ways. And I've met the likes of all of you, everyone in this room. I haven't met every single one of you, but most of you that I saw, I do know after all these years. And I do feel like you are our family. I hope you feel that you are a part of our family because we certainly feel a part of yours. We miss Blaze terribly. I, I still am not totally resolved that I can, still can't quite believe that it is true, to tell you the truth. I, I haven't, it hasn't sunk in yet, but it's sinking in. And 
you're the ones that are keeping me going, keeping Colleen and my children and our grandchildren and all of us going, and we will miss plays hugely, but we have to believe, and we do believe, that his spirit is truly in every one of us, every one of us who have experienced his kindness. And by the way, I should also mention that my father lived with us the last two winters of his life because he lived in upstate New York, so I, I brought him out here for the winter months, and he lived with us, and he used to write to my family at home and say, Blaze is the kindest person I have ever met, and he loved Blaze, too. So I just want to thank you again. Uh, I just, I'm so pleased to be able to talk with you and be with you, and Pray for us all. Let's all try to get through this together and live our lives as generously and as the one thing that kept Blaze so joyful in spite of everything he did is because he always did what he believed in. He always did what he believed in. And I think that's the life that we each want to live. And I thank you so much again for being here with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. family we're going to go up there and walk out with you and uh, I hope to still say hello to more of you and good night and thank you and I'll be seeing you at all the demonstrations as we all know now we've got a lot of work to do so we'll be out there thank you and we'll leave over here hello we'll leave with this song that uh, my father sang at, at, at many events and that we all love Last night I had the strangest dream I ever had before. I dreamed that we had all agreed to put an end to war. I dreamed I saw a mighty room. The room was filled with them. The paper they were signing said, we'll never fight again. And when the papers all were signed and a million copies made, they all joined hands and bowed their heads and grateful prayers were prayed. And the people in the streets below were dancing round and round. And guns and swords and uniforms were scattered on the ground. Last night I had the strangest dream I ever had before. I dreamed that we had all agreed to put an end to war. Hasta la victoria siempre.